Let's read The Easter Ribbit. Easter was coming. The bunnies were very busy making pretty Easter baskets, carrying jelly beans, and painting eggs. Froggy watched them from the pond. Sometimes he wished he were a rabbit. They seemed to be having so much fun. Hmm, maybe he could convince Turtle to let him paint her eggs before they hatched. Frogly Froggy quickly ran to the beach. Turtle was there covering her eggs with sand. Ribbit, ribbit, Froggy called to Turtle. It's almost Easter. May I paint your eggs? Keep quiet, Turtle warned. Can't you see I'm trying to hide them? If you were to paint them, every bird in the forest would see my eggs and eat them before the babies could hatch and crawl to the water. Go back to your log and stop bothering me. Froggy walked sadly to his favorite hollow log near the rabbit tree and crawled inside. After a long time of feeling sorry for himself, he fell asleep and had a dream. In the dream, he was an Easter ribbit. Not quite a rabbit, but not a frog either. He was rushing through the high grass to deliver Easter baskets to all the children. The baskets were full of things that Froggy loved. Jelly beans, lollipops, flies, tiny fish eggs, seaweed bars, and delicious mosquitoes too. <laughs> Suddenly a terrible noise woke Freddy. Froggy, he opened his eyes and peeked out of the log. The chief Easter Bunny had just landed in a helicopter. He was carrying armfuls of lists of all the children who needed Easter presents. Mrs. Rabbit and all of her assistants came running out to greet him. You are doing a wonderful job, said the chief, but we need more helpers. Can you handle an extra load of deliveries? Oh, dear, said Mrs. Rabbit. We don't have enough bunnies to deliver the baskets. Flossie and Fernie caught colds last night, and I'm afraid they are running fevers. And Hubert and Henry hurt their feet squeezing under a fence. They can't run until next week. What will we do? Advertise, said the chief Easter bunny. Help wanted Easter rabbit. Call Mrs. Duck's employment agency. She can fly over the woods and drop ads for the position tonight. Mrs. Duck's a quack, but she may be able to help us. All right, said Mrs. Rabbit. We'll do our best. Mrs. Duck was sound asleep when Mrs. Rabbit called, but she woke up and wrote the ad anyway. Unfortunately, Mrs. Duck was very nearsighted and didn't see her spelling mistake. Instead of writing an ad for an Easter rabbit, she had written an ad for an Easter ribbit. Mm. One of the ads landed on Froggy's log. Froggy saw it as soon as he woke up the next morning. An Easter ribbit, said Froggy. That's me. It was his dream come true. Quickly, he wrote down Mrs. Duck's address and ran to the employment office. Although she couldn't see well, Mrs. Duck suspected that she was looking at a frog. Nevertheless, Froggy was the only client who had come into her office for a very long time, and there wasn't a rabbit in sight. Mrs. Duck ran to her storage room and cut, up, cut out a big pair of paper bunny ears. She tied them on Freddy's, Froggy's head. Then Mrs. Duck pasted a big cotton ball on Froggy to make a rabbit's tail. Froggy was divinely happy. He ran to Mrs. Rabbit's tree right away. Mrs. Rabbit and all her assistants were working feverishly to color new eggs and fill new baskets. Glancing quickly at Froggy's big floppy ears, Mrs. Rabbit didn't notice that he was an Easter ribbit and not an Easter rabbit. She pointed to a tall tower of Easter baskets outside the back door and told Froggy to start his deliveries. Froggy looked up at the baskets. Ribbit, he gasped. I'll never be able to deliver all of these by Easter. There was only one thing to do. Quickly, he hopped down to the pond. 
Ribbiting as loudly as he could, Froggy called for all his friends and relatives to come and help him. Soon a crowd of frogs of all shapes and sizes leapfrogged to pick up the baskets and stacked behind Mrs. Rabbit's tree. And if you had been anywhere near Froggy's log at the crack of dawn on Easter morning, you would have seen them marching through the meadow to deliver the Easter baskets to the children. And at the head of the parade was Froggy, ribbiting a happy song. Here's Froggy's song. I'm a froggy in a hurry, and I've really got to scurry before the sun comes up while all the kids are sleeping. I'll be hopping, sprinting, leaping. I'm as happy as a pup. I can't be a rabbit, so I'll be an Easter ribbit. It's true I'm green, but if I'm seen, I really can ad lib it. I'll leave some Easter baskets, and everyone will cheer. A tisket, a tasket. The ribbit has been here. And from that day to this, if you listen carefully, you will always hear the little frogs called peepers singing in the woods in early spring. They are telling the story of Froggy the Easter Ribbit and how he became a hero to little frogs everywhere. There's the song, and if you want to pause and play that, you can probably sing it better than I did. I hope you enjoyed this read-through of the Easter Ribbit and that you subscribe and come back often, and we'll see you around.